So welcome to those of you that were able to join us tonight. Um, oh, we got a couple more coming in. Um, I would like to introduce Julia Handelman from the Youth Yoga Project um, to put on our parent and caregiver mindfulness workshop for tonight. Thank you, Brenda, and hello to all of the families here who are able to join us live on Zoom. Uh, this will be recorded, of course, um, so if you have any friends that weren't able to make it, know that it will be available to them shortly. Um, I'm here from Youth Yoga Project to support you um, with your own mindfulness and movement strategies and give you a framework for supporting the kids in your house. And we're specifically talking about elementary uh, aged kids. I'm an elementary school teacher myself and am so fortunate to partner with Lakewood Schools this year um, as a nonprofit school partner to provide mindfulness and movement training for educators and um, for those educators to then teach to the students in the school. Um, and we wanted to reach out to you families to give you some things you can do in the home. So I'm curious about uh, everyone's you know, background. If you're having nervousness around, I don't know what mindfulness is or I don't know what uh, movement, uh, you know, practices that you might be talking about, that's okay. We will give you some of those tools that are easy for every age to do this evening. Um, so our workshop goal is to provide you with mindfulness and movement tools to support yourself and your families, knowing that uh, we believe calm, regulated adults are su most supportive of the young people who might be dysregulated. So when, when a kid is having a temper tantrum or having big feelings, the best thing we can do is be that calm, regulated, regulated adult. So we hope to give you some of those strategies this evening so that you can be the best supportive uh, family member that you um, can. So to get us started, um, I thought that we would ground ourselves in what mindfulness means. Um, if you're interested in the topic of mindfulness, I encourage you to read or look up John Kabat-Zinn, who really has a lot of research and uh, books um, that allow us to dive deeper into this topic. But in schools, um, we really think about mindfulness as paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So if we're able to pay attention to what's happening, then a lot of things happen for ourselves um, in a positive way, right? The first thing you need to do as a learner is to attend to it. So if you build your attention skills, then you will be able to learn um, more effectively, possibly. And for us, speaking about when kids need it, when they're feeling stressed or anxious or having those big feelings, it helps them ground themselves in the present moment by not thinking about what's upsetting them, but maybe thinking about what's in front of them. So I encourage you to uh, spend the next hour with me exploring these concepts. So, when we want, we want to use mindfulness when kids need it most. And we think kids need it most when they're dysregulated. And what do we mean by that term, dysregulated? It's a big term that's used a lot, I think, in popular culture. But really what it means is that you're um, really feeling big feelings and you're in your sympathetic nervous system, which means the lower half of your brain. Our brain is um, in two different places. It's a um, lower half and a higher half. And the lower half is um, where your emotional brain is. It's where you process all of your emotions. And if it gets stuck in there, then you won't be able to get to your higher order thinking and your higher brain. And so when we're in our sympathetic nervous system, we're really feeling our feelings intensely. And our body is in that fight, fight, or freeze response. It feels like super tight, possibly. Um, you might wanna hide or you might wanna fight or you might wanna flee the situation. And then you can tell when kids aren't feeling great is when 
you're feeling, um, they, you can see them take those rapid, shallow chest breathing. And you might feel the same way. If you get anxious or frustrated, can you tell the difference between how you're breathing? Um, I'm curious, you might be able to do that um, and have that self-awareness as an adult. And we wanna help kids to have that self-awareness when they're feeling super, super, super frustrated to have them understand that they're in their emotional brain. And when we breathe and move with rhythm or repetition, it helps them to get to that regulated place. So what do we mean by regulated? It means when you're in your higher um, part of your brain, you're in your parasympathetic nervous system. It means you're able to um, process things using logic and reasoning. You're in your thinking brain. Your body is in the rest and digest place. So if you ever notice you're tossing and turning at night, it might be because your body is still processing things in your emotional brain and um, you need to get to that rest and digest place to get, kind of get to that relaxed state. And then your breathing is long, slow, what we call belly breathing. So inhalations through your nose and out of your nose so that you can begin to notice your breath and breathe big and strong. So we want to help you to um, help kids regulate through breathing, movement, and, and um, move and moving with repetition. So what does that mean? Um, we know that kids are not always regulated. Adults are not always regulated. We ourselves, um, you know, probably had many moments today when we felt a little off, right? When we were frustrated, angry, sad, annoyed. So if you can think of all of those times when kids are feeling that way, we want to help them know when they're feeling that way so they can use these strategies to get regulated. And I'm curious, does anyone have any strategies themselves that they want to share that helps them when they're feeling these, these big things just as adults or you're teaching your kids? You can unmute yourself if you want to share. usually a timeout. Okay. So thank you, Katie, for letting us know um, you're going to a timeout. You're taking time for yourself, right? The kid is taking time for themselves. And I wonder, Katie, um, are you able to give them any tools to move with rhythm and repetition first or do the deep breaths? Um, for me, I don't usually, usually do a shakeout thing, mm. but I'm really overwhelmed, but I have no idea if that is relatable to this. <laughs> Yes, no, it does. So any movement with rhythm and repetition. So shaking, that's rhythm and repetition, right? Or humming or drumming, dancing, anything to get your mood up, right? So thank you, Katie. So when we talk about how we help kids from needing a time out to being good after the time out, what I'm going to do today is help you insert movement with the rhythm and repetition. So before they go to time out, or in timeout, they'll already know how to move in timeout. Does that make sense to everyone? So we're kind of adding on that movement and rhythm of repetition. Great. So when you get regulated, um, you are using strategies like breathing movement um, to help you to get calm. And so when we're regulated, we're then ready to talk about what happened, to talk about uh, maybe making an apology if we broke a rule, things like that. But before we do any of that, we have to get regulated, right? And I want to invite you to co-regulate with your kids. So research has shown that there's something called mirror neurons. And mirror neurons is, is something that's biological in us. So if I am next to Melanie, then she's going to feel my... Um, neurons and Mel and I'm going to feel hers, right? And so we're going to bounce off of each other. So what if we were both moving and both kind of in sync, right? So that's going to be easier for that child to move and get regulated because we're doing it together. So I want to invite you when you're teaching these strategies for your, to your kids to 
regulate with them, to move with them. So I'm gonna teach you a few strategies and breathing and movement that you can do right away. And we're gonna move with your kids. And then once they know them, they'll know them, they'll have them memorized. And you might be able to use them, Katie, like in um, timeout. So they continue to regulate themselves in timeout. So then timeout becomes an easier thing for them to process. So with that said, um, I know that young kids have a lot of feelings. And so we want to help them gain control of their attention, their emotions, their behavior. And they have this growing capability to manage it, manage their impulse, but they don't have it all done yet, right? They're still growing it. And so they still also might not have a, a sense of delayed gratification. They might want it now. And so all of those things are something that might dysregulate them. And because of that, we wanna give them these tools and strategies. So us as adults, we can model and reinforce the self-calming strategies like taking deep breaths or the repetitive movement to help them when they're feeling these big feelings. And so um, I wonder, what are the things that you could teach them maybe without even me teaching you, right? Like, what are the things you do? Like Katie already says, shake it out. This is awesome. In my classroom, we do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then we keep going until we get to 1, 1, 1, 1. And we're just consistently just wringing out our body um, with uh, rhythm and repetition. You might do jumping jacks. Right? Um, you might do anything that repeats, basically. Deep breaths repeat. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, right? Um, so kind of think big. What your child already likes, kind of lean into that. How they can regulate themselves and move their bodies um, to help their nervous system feel better. Okay, I apologize. I have an older dog in the background. So if you hear that, that's what that sound is. And I apologize for that, but we're gonna keep on going. So I'm gonna model what this could look like for you. Um, and this is something that helps elementary schools particularly because they don't necessarily have the language to identify how they're feeling. And so we wanna give them the language. So as you can see, the inner circle is um, many of the universal feelings that all humans feel. Love, fear, anger, sadness, happiness, surprise, and disgust. You can also use the movie Inside Out to help kids to know their feelings. Um, but this, this is um, giving synonyms to those feelings. So if we give kids an emotional vocabulary, then we're allowing them to have the words to identify how they're feeling and then communicate it with us. Because we want to know as family members and caregivers how we can help them. So it gives them that communication. So I encourage you to do this activity with your family. You might do it at dinner time. You might do it in the car. And it's anywhere where kids can really sit and focus on the present moment. Remember that mindfulness definition, non-judgmentally for a few minutes. So I'm going to invite you, if you'd like to uh, do it with me, to pull up your imaginary string, which helps you to uh, help your circulation. You're sitting up nice and tall. Your head neck and spine are all in a line. Your shoulders are away from your ears and you're just noticing how you're feeling. I'm gonna invite you to either gaze down or close your eyes and place one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. And you're gonna breathe in and out smoothly and lengthen each inhalation and exhalation. I invite you to breathe in through your nose, and out through your nose, noticing how that feels. I wonder, can you notice the difference between the temperature of the room versus the temperature of your body? Can you notice any smells that you might smell? 
taste that you might taste. And begin to focus your attention on how you feel. How do you feel that right now? Is there one word that can describe how you're feeling? Or do you need many words to describe? Locate one to two to three feeling words that can support you to identify how you're feeling now. When you're ready, you can flutter your eyes open. If you see the word on this wheel, you might be able to identify it, or it might not be on this wheel. But this is a skill that we're gonna teach kids because they might not know how they're feeling because they don't have the vocabulary to identify it. So you might model it with that co-regulation idea that says, you know, mom feels a certain kind of way and here's why. And so you're a modeling identifying your feelings and you're modeling really kind of understanding and being curious about yourself. And remember all feelings are welcome. Some might stay for longer than others, but all feelings are welcome, okay? So I know that some kids I work with, they suffer from deep, deep depression, right? And they're really, they have that negative self-talk already in their head, even though they're seven or eight, right? But if I tell them it's okay to be sad, it changes something in them. And if I give them the tools to say, if you're sad, I wonder if you can use your breathing and your movement to see if that sadness will stay for a long period of time or a short period of time and just be curious about it. So they aren't overwhelmed by their sadness. They are observing their sadness. It takes a while to get to that state. So start small, do baby steps. And I'm curious, um, is this something that um, you might be able to do at the dinner table or in the car or before bed, right? So we are really grateful to you um, for having that open mind to say, I wonder if this could be something that I put into my toolbox of tools to support kids at home. So I hope you're able to have that two word check in for yourself. It's quick and easy. And um, now that we have kind of grounded ourselves in a movement, or excuse me, a breathing practice, I'm going to move on to a quote. And this is going to help us for the next 40 minutes to really um, help us understand how we're gonna use mindfulness and movement to help kids. And Dr. Bruce Perry is another name I want to highlight as someone in the field nationally who's talking about this work if you'd like to look him up, please do. But he's a neuropsychologist as well as medical doctor. And he says this simple phrase, regulate, then relate, then reason. And we re when we regulate, relate, reason, we're simply saying move first, help them feel safe second, and then problem solve third. So when you're in that timeout situation with kids, you're gonna give them time to regulate themselves in timeout, then help them feel loved and supported, then reason with them. Does that make sense? So that is our formula for today. So um, as we dive into this, I wanna highlight Dr. Lisa Demore's work and she actually is a psychologist in the Cleveland area who's known for a podcast around parenting. So if you, again, would, would like more resources, I totally recommend her. Um, she has a podcast um, about parenting issues. And she says, basically, that there is such a thing as healthy stress, right? So when kids are stressed out, if they're stressed out about a swim meet, for example, and then the swim meet happens, they can kind of understand that they were stressed out because they were nervous or excited about a swim meet. The swim meet happened and, and then they were able to kind of reflect on that because it's a tangible thing that um, they can see. When it becomes unhealthy stress, it's when kids are 
um, worrying about things that have really no end, right? This idea of worrying about, you know, climate change is a perfect example of that. You know, kids don't really, you can't really process a big idea of climate change. Um, and so they might be feeling that intense stress around that. But when you're feeling healthy stress, you're feeling stress around what is the birthday party going to be like? When is Christmas going to come? What's going to happen on the test? You know, those are healthy stress that we all have and we're helping kids navigate. So I just wanted to make sure that if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I see so much anxiety and stress, it's typically, it's perfectly typical of growing kids to feel stress. It's just when they feel the stress of the world and it's a big stress that doesn't seem to ever end that we wanna kind of pause and say that might not be as healthy. But we're talking about healthy stress right now and healthy coping skills, right? So how do kids communicate stress? When you see them maybe having a behavior uh, regression or fighting, arguing, complaining, maybe they're, they're changing sleeping habits. All of those are communicating a bigger, deeper feeling. They're all, they might be feeling fear, worry, anger, anxiety, tiredness, grief, frustration, but they aren't able to tell you that because they don't have that emotional vocabulary yet, but they will show you with their behavior, right? So I want to give you this simple idea that all communication, or excuse me, all behavior is communication. So when you're seeing kids um, do that, think to yourself, what are they trying to communicate? And then how can we support them with regulations tools, okay? So we can support them with our um, big idea of regulate, relate, and reason. So regulate. We are going to move with belly breaths, moving breath, and half sun sequence. And these are the tools that I recommend you use and put into your toolbox. You might already have jumping jacks from earlier, right? Things that you normally just know how to do. You might have, you love jumping rope. You could have jumping rope next to them in that timeout space. Anything that's going to be regulation, regulating, right? But belly breaths is that breathing through your nose and out through your nose, and it helps kids to really focus their attention. Moving breath is something I'm gonna teach you that marries the movement with the breath because our nervous system is regulated even faster when we're using our deep breaths to help our circulation and help our brain go from our emotional brain to our higher order thinking skills and our upper brain. And then also the half sun sequence, which is um, just an, kind of a variation on the moving breath. They can be done with no yoga mat, no equipment. And that's why we love it because you can do it anytime, anywhere, um, in the car, at grandma's, at the bus stop, um, as long as you have your brain, your body and your breath, which we all carry around all the time. So here we go. Um, I am gonna come back to this slide, but we're gonna start at first. So belly breaths, you can do it um, here, like the little girl is at her seat and she might be learning that in school. So if you say, hey, do you use belly breaths? She, that your child might already say, yeah, I already know them, they could teach you. And then you can co-regulate together, right? But the idea is you're taking a breath in through your nose and out through your nose in through your nose and out through your nose. And you're really supporting your focus around your belly. So kids can, a young, young kids, I know Katie has pre-K and kindergarten kids. They can like imagine that a balloon is in their, um, their underneath their sweater and that balloon is filling up with air and then getting smaller. And so you're really concentrating on noticing your belly go in and out as you take belly breaths. So I invite you to just take five belly breaths with me and we're going to see how we feel. So for belly breaths, as you can see, I'm putting my hand on my belly so I can notice when my belly is going in and out. 
So I invite you to sit up tall, place your feet on the floor, and we'll do belly breaths together. Inhale, fill up your lungs with air. Exhale, release the air from your nose. Five. Inhale. Release, exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Three, your breath sounds great. You can tell your kids that too. Inhale. Exhale. Two, inhale. Exhale. One. If your eyes are closed, I invite you to flutter them open. And simply notice how you're feeling. If kids are feeling super, super unhappy and potentially breaking a rule or needing a timeout, belly breaths will help them to regulate their emotions to then help themselves to feel better and be able to communicate with you. So I invite you to have them do belly breaths anytime they're feeling anxious, upset, frustrated, any big feelings. And kids as young as two can learn them and really support themselves throughout the day. So belly breaths again is taking long deep breaths in through your nose and out through your nose. If you have a cold or if you have allergies, of course you can breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth or in through your mouth, of course, right? But if we don't have those barriers, it is interesting to see how kids can really take those long breaths in and out. And if you Google Elmo belly breaths, you can see Elmo doing the belly breaths in a video. And maybe your kids would love that as well. So um, belly breaths is the foundation to regulating with mindfulness. And we hope that um, you enjoy doing it and would potentially co-regulate with your kids by introducing it to them at home. So after they learn belly breaths, I want to support you by marrying breath with movement. So if you'd like to, you can keep your camera on or off and you can um, practice the moving breath with me. And this means moving with the rhythm and repetition. Remember, rhythm and repetition means that you're doing things repetitively, like walking, running, biking, hula hooping, jump roping, or moving breath, right? So for moving breath, I invite you to stand up tall in your space and be ready to move with me. All right, so as you can see me, I am standing on what we call mountain, which means that your feet are flat on the floor, parallel, your toes are facing out, hips distance apart. Place your palms down, fingertips down, shoulder blades up, ears. And then flip your palms. Apologies. Give me one second. Stand here and use your belly breaths. I'll be right with you. So thank you. As you're standing there, we are ready to go. So you're standing up, palms facing back. You can look down. You should be able to see your fingertips. And we're going to move with in each inhalation and exhalation, we'll move our arms. So inhale, come up to your shoulders, fingers facing out. On your exhale, come to a T, like you're giving someone a hug. Great job. 
Inhale, come up, fingertips up towards the sky, reach up. Exhale, bend your knees, send your um, crown of your head down to the floor, and then come back up. Let's try it again. Here we go. Inhale up to your shoulders. Exhale T your arms. Inhale, fingertips up to the sky. This time, let it out big. Ah, opening up your mouth and releasing it. Ha! Ah, great job. Let's do it at normal speed to begin with. Inhale, exhale, inhale, release. Ha! Great job. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Release. Ah! Great job. Now let's go slow. Inhale like you're in quicksand. Exhale. Inhale. Release. Ha! Bending those knees. One more time. Quicksand. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, release. Ha! <sighs> Great job. Do it a few more times on your own. Noticing the effect of moving and breathing with rhythm and repetition. You can go faster, slower, whatever your pace is, you're helping yourself to focus on the present moment, to regulate your nervous system and really support yourself. You can end in mountain pose again, placing one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. Just notice how you feel. Do you feel any changes in your brain, body, or breath? As you notice that, I invite you to see uh, where could you teach this? Could it be a fun Saturday morning activity? Could you add it on to hula hooping or jump roping? When can you teach this tool called moving breath to your kids so they could use it when they need it? The next tool is the half sun sequence. And half sun sequence is a variation on the moving breath but you don't go to the T arms. You're simply coming up, bending forward, coming back up, and then back to mountain. And notice that when you fall forward, kids and adults alike will like this because it releases pressure on our low back and our shoulders where we all carry a lot of stress, but it also helps our circulation because we're having our head go up below our waist, which is really good for our circulation. So here we go. We're standing in mountain pose, feet are hip distance apart, toes are facing forward, fingertips down, palms facing out. This time I invite you to do a big inhalation and bring your arms up to the sky, heart opens, look up, inhale. Great job. Exhale, forward fold, hang loose, maybe shake your head, yes. Shake your head, no. Awesome job. On your next inhalation, come back up, shoulders away from ears, heart opens, fingertips towards the sky, and then back to mountain. Great job. Let's do it three more times on your own pace or with me. Inhale up, exhale down, forward fold. Inhale up towards the sky, fingertips up. Exhale, back to mountain. Great job, two more times. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Back to mountain. Last time. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Back to mountain. Great job. If you'd like to do it a few more times, I invite you to do that. Remember that we carry stress in our 
um, face where our jaw is, our shoulders, our hips, um, and our neck. And I invite you just to notice, can you release any tension so that you can feel better in those areas now? Can you place your tongue from the roof of your mouth to the bottom of your mouth and part your lips? Can you release your shoulders away from your ears and imagine the stress melting away like snow? Can you bend your knees a little bit so you can sit, or excuse me, stand really tall, but being kind to your joints? Just notice how you're feeling. And, and did that movement change anything for you? I hope that it did. So now that we know belly breath, moving breath and half sun sequence, I invite you to think about other movements that you do as a family that you might wanna add to this toolbox. Do you wanna add hula hooping? Do you wanna add jump roping? Do you want to add anything that you watch as a family together, um, like uh, Cosmic Kids or any other videos that um, support movement? Do you have any athletes in your household and they can teach you some things that they might do to warm up? Um, anything to do with rhythm or repetition. But these are the three that um, I would like to support you with tonight. Belly breath, moving breath and half sense sequence. Um, and uh, I want to help you to um, teach these tools when your child is calm. And remember, and co-regulate with them. So um, when can you teach it to them? Can you teach it to them at dinner or after dinner? Can you teach it to them um, you know, on that Saturday morning? Kind of think of a place where you can teach it to them because we don't want to teach it when they need it. When they're in time out upset about something, we don't want to say, hey, I have a tool for you to regulate. Because remember, they're dysregulated and they're in their an emotional brain. So use this idea of we teach children to swim um, when they're calm and happy to be in the water, not when they're drowning, right? So pick times where they're super happy and they'll do activity with you so they can learn some of these tools. And then you can remind them to use them when you, they need it, right? So when they're in timeout, you can say, hey, remember that belly breath? Do 10 belly breaths in timeout so that they can get regulated or do five moving breaths so they can get regulated. Does that make sense to everyone? It's a framework for moving first. Um, you know, I was a swimmer in college and I, I would, you know, I would even do this with my students, right? That's rhythm and repetition. I don't have a swimming pool, but I can do it, right? So there's no rules for this. Um, and thanks for those thumbs up. I uh, just want to help you to see that your breath and your body moving together is what helps your nervous system. So add that to your toolbox and that's regulation, right? So we're teaching, to, teaching it to them so they can use it when they are dysregulated. And now, and then after they're regulated, right? After they are um, ready to talk to you, then I encourage you to use um, this relationship building time, right? To make sure you're affirming that they are loved and cared for and they're safe with you. Um, and I encourage you to check your own body language, tone and facial expression. Remember that we have those mirror neurons. So if you're that calm adult that's supporting them through um, this time when they're not feeling good, then they are going to get that energy from you. They are gonna get your presence and they're gonna feel even more supported because their nervous system will talk to your nervous system. So I encourage you to bring ease into your body. So if those tools that I just gave you resonate with you, please use them. I take walks multiple times a day. I do moving breath multiple times a day because it helps me to stay regulated. And I definitely do them before talking to a student or a child about something so that I can be that calm, regulated adult. So that's, this is the time to build relationship after they 
um, come down and feel regulated. And you can tell they're regulated when their pulse is low, right? That their pulse is not racing anymore, that they don't feel anger or tension in their body and that they're bringing ease into their body. So even that check of, can you part your lips? Can you push your shoulders down? Can you just relax with me? If they're not able to do that, then keep regulating with them. Oh, we need to move more, let's move more. But if they are regulated, they're ready for relationship building with you. And then I wanna give you a tool to support your, your kids when they're needing reason, right? So when you need to reason with them, I want to invite you to help kids identify those feelings, how they might be feeling, pull out that emotion wheel and help them to name how they are feeling. Okay. So you might say, you might use questioning, like, are you feeling happy? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling frustrated? Are you feeling angry? And then they might be able to tell you, yes, I'm feeling that way or no, and you'll keep going, right? And then once they build up that emotional vocabulary, they can tell you how they're feeling, right? And you might say, um, why are you feeling that way, right? And they might say, I know I'm feeling that way because um, you know, I was thinking about something that made me really happy and I put a smile on my face and I knew I was happy. Um, or I'm really angry because of such and such happened at recess or, um, you know, with my brother. And so, you know, they're, they'll, they'll learn how to talk about it, but it's really important to reason through them, with them, and um, help them solve a problem by brainstorming solutions, okay? So how do we help them identify the problem and listen? Um, I encourage you to ask what instead of why, so maybe instead of saying, why did you do that? You can ask what happened, right? And give them a chance to explain what happened from their perspective. Maybe you have a perspective of why they may have had a punishment or something that bothered them, but it gives them a voice. And uh, you might ask, what are you feeling? Or what are you thinking? Again, to help them identify their thoughts and feelings and explain that all, um, Feelings are welcome. We all feel many different things. And some of those feelings are just going to stay longer than others. And then you might ask them what they need. They might need a hug. They might need you to help them solve the bigger problem. They might need, you know, a change in lunch, for example. We do a lot of changes in lunch when kids don't like their lunch. So, um, you know, what do they need and can you solve that? problem for them. So this is a framework for helping them when they're feeling those big emotions. And um, to summarize the regulate, relate reason, I want to just leave you with this idea around regulate, relate reason. And we're doing it to help kids calm down when, um, before talking to them, okay? So before telling them to sit down, or before you know, trying to engage with them by talk, we're helping them calm down with rhythm and repetition through movement. And I invite you to co-regulate, right? Do it with them to help the mirror neurons. Um, then relate by helping them see they're safe and then potentially reason with them about how they can solve their problems. So this is a tool that's going to be provided to you um, on the Parent Hub and, and in the email. And you can print it out and put it anywhere that's helpful to you as a reminder. And I want to invite you to think about what you can do now. Think about what you can do because all kids are taking the cues from us, right? So how do we de-stress ourselves before talking to the kids? How do we become calm, confident, intentional, and regulated? Um, what do you, what, what, what would you like to do? Do you have, does belly breath resonate with you? Does um, moving breath resonate with you? Um, we want to use Katie, shake it out. You know, using things for yourself first, you know, putting on your oxygen mask before helping your student, your child put on their oxygen mask is kind of the analogy we're going for here. And for that, I want to give you one that might be supportive of you um, 
as an adult. And kids can do this too, but it's really nice for adults to be able to really um, have that uh, tactile feeling and slowing their breath down. And it's called tracing breath. And so for tracing breath, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen quickly. And I'm going to invite you to place your hand up like you're giving um, kind of a stop sign, or you can place your hand um, on the uh, table in front of you or on your lap, but your hand needs to look like this. And for the alternate hand, you're gonna take your index finger and place it on the bottom of your thumb. And as you inhale, you're gonna trace your hand. And this could help you if you need to be calm and regulated. So here we go. Inhale up your thumb, exhale down your thumb. Inhale up your thumb, or excuse me, index finger, exhale down your finger. Inhale up your middle finger, exhale down your middle finger. Keep going as you trace your whole hand and just notice how you're feeling. This works for you to support your nervous system. Go back towards your uh, thumb and see if you want to speed up or slow down to your choice. Anyone can do this as long as you have your fingers and you want to trace. You might notice the sensations of your fingers help you to uh, notice the present moment intentionally. You know, what is the sensations feeling like? Is it ticklish? What temperature is your hand? These are things that are gonna help you calm down when you need to, okay? Great job making sure you're breathing as you're tracing. Awesome job. When you're done, on that last trace, you can just stop at the end of your thumb. And then I just invite you to think about how you're feeling and if you can release any tension again. If you're feeling tension through your spine, we're gonna do um, just a twist to help yourself to um, feel better. If you're sitting down in your chair, I invite you to frame your face, lifting your fingertips up towards the sky, inhale, Exhale, twist to one side, placing uh, your front hand on the chair or the side of your knee and then your back hand um, framing the chair. And then look beyond your shoulder, sitting up nice and tall, twist. Just notice how your whole spine can twist, bringing out that stress. Inhale up towards the sky, fingertips up, exhale, go the opposite way, right? Look beyond your shoulder. Awesome job. And then continue to do this as many times as you need to. Twisting helps you to get to that rest and digest place that I spoke about earlier. Remembering to marry your breath with your movement. Inhalation as you look up, exhalation as you twist. And just notice if you're feeling tension in your shoulders and your back. And hopefully this is helping you to release some of that tension. Kids, of course, can twist too. It's a great activity to twist. You might have them place their hands on their hips and twist, twist, twist. There you go. See the girls are doing it with me now. Awesome job. So twisting is great for all of us. It helps us promote flexibility and feel strong. So as you can say this, you can say, I feel strong girls, right? <laughs> awesome job. So just know that um, everyone is a calm all the time who does mindfulness. It's just they're using these tools to support their nervous system. So I hope that we are able to give you these tools to support yourself. And thank you for the grace with my dogs interrupting. <laughs> So we're gonna keep going to support even more. I wanna give you this motto for yourself. When you're feeling an overwhelming feeling, such as frustration, you know, um, 
anything that is really getting you down. I want you to use the motto, it's a part of life, right? And this is, in this moment, I'm feeling that feeling. And then I want you to potentially say to yourself and maybe your child, I have compassion for myself. I have compassion for others. I can bring ease into my mind and my body and I can bring ease um, to other people, right? And so that helps you kind of frame it. These moments won't last forever, but it helps your brain to remember that. So you have compassion for yourself, compassion for others, bring ease into your mind and body and be comforted by each other's presence. So I'm gonna go back to that two word check-in and just notice, are there any changes that you feel? Do you feel any different? from when we started to now? Do you have a word that you're feeling or two words or three words? And um, all the resources for the recording um, and that um, framework will be available to you via email in the Family Hub. And I just want to really give you, um, you know, grace for yourself and uh, just know that um, we're here to support you. If you need anything, you can email us um, at info at youthyogaproject.net. I'll put it into the chat. Um, but I want to make sure I provide some time just in case you have any questions about anything that I've gone over since we have a small group and you can type them into the chat or unmute yourself. Great, there is no questions. Um, I want to wish you all a wonderful evening. And I'm so grateful that I was able to spend this time with you. Oh, looks like someone's coming on. But Brenda, I'll pass it back to you in case there's anything you would like to say. I think you might be muted. Sorry, yes, thank you. Uh, just, I would um, second the message of thanks for everyone who is able to join us tonight. Thank you to you, Julia, for sharing your expertise um, so that work we're doing with our students can extend home and vice versa and uh, pass the word that this will be available to those who weren't able to make it tonight. Yeah. And I do see one question that I wanted to respond to from Katie R. And, you know, a lot of kids um, might be hesitant to do some of these exercises, but that's why co-regulation is so important. If you're modeling for them, like, hey, I'm going to do this breathing exercise. Can you do it with me? They're much um, uh, more willing to try it with you than to just do it for themselves, right? So if you do it together, you might even add it on to something they already like to do, right? So, hey, insert whatever they like to do. Let's do some belly breathing while we're doing that activity, right? So for my niece, we like to bake together and I sometimes teach her some tools while we're baking. She's a captive audience and she enjoys baking with me, right? And we're co-regulating together. So it's not this idea of here's your homework, you have to learn these tools. It's, hey, I want to share something with you that works for me. Can you do it with me? And then help them to use it when they need it. Katie, does that make sense to you? Okay, great. Awesome. And thanks for that wonderful question. 
but yeah, um, you know, just know that um, the, we're, the handout will help support um, the conversation and will give you some of that language that I went over. So look for that in the Parent Hub and um, let us know if you need anything else. We're happy to provide it to Brenda and her team to pass it on to you. All right, thank you and have a great night, everyone.